Easy Tigers. I hope everyone's fine and dandy. First things first, I just want to big up the Patreons and people that have shown some love and give me some support. It's thanks to you guys I get to stay out the matrix and explore these sites and bring you the information. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. And if you want to show some love, I've got buttons on my homepage or I'll leave links in the description. Well, 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 eh? No pun intended. So we're going to be looking at star faults and the correlation with water, cathedrals, cymatic patterns, and all that jazz. So that's what we're going to be looking at. I'm not going to go in depth. and like I'm just going to see why these star cities and star faults had cathedrals in the middle of them and why they passed water through them. That's what I want to find out. So, like I said before, we're going to be looking at the, the LIDAR around the region. This has been sped up, this little image here, so don't worry about it being all glitchy. It's going to be incredible what I'm going to show you. It's, so once again, my, my research has been taken to another level due to this LIDAR business. And we're going to be looking at this guy here, which is an absolute load of cobblers, but it's a quite a funny little story. So, apparently this guy saved Winchester Cathedral with his bare hands underwater. I'll tell you the story and we'll break it down and it's a complete load of BS. Really, the cathedral flooded with its underground water system. But anyway, where do we start? Should we start off with Fountains Abbey? And with a name like that, it's very suspect, huh? Why would you call it Fountain Abbey? Very strange. And another thing is, it's something to do with all these abbeys. These abbeys always have a stream or a river or something running around it or underneath it. Which proved me wrong because I've been researching this for over a year now and I can't find one. Uh, so, and if it says it hasn't got a river around it, like I said, it goes underneath it. And you can you can look at the Star Fault maps and cities and see all this stuff on there. So, anyway, this is one in question at the moment. So, Fountains Abbey is one of the largest, best preserved, ruined, Sistican monasteries. Now, that word's very suspect. Sistic, Sistican. Sistan. Reminds me of a cistern, like water cistern in England. It's located approximately three miles southwest of Ripon in North Yorkshire. Near to, near to the village of Adfield. Founded in 1132, the abbey operated for 407 years, becoming one of the wealthiest monasteries in England until its dissolution by the order of uh, Henry VIII. And Henry VIII, or this, this story has something to do with this, because he's the one that got rid of all these places. Now, I think he must have been the guy that was like, right, nah, they're not having all this powerful, powerful water or healing centers or anything like that. It was down to that cat. Or should we say he was the face that ushered in these restrictions and stuff like that. A report stated that the Abbey is at risk of being in irreparable damage by flooding, with several instances in recent years, particularly in 2007, when the 12th century ruins and water garden have been deluged by water. Funding from the National Lottery Heritage Fund, announced in early 2021, was intended to help finance the Skill Valley Scheme, which would rejuvenate 12 miles of river scale to help minimise the risk of flooding. So obviously this river's been man-made to pass to through here and it probably passes a couple of towns now another little clue for this it goes to say that the monks harnessed the power of the holy well stream to run a corn mill and to treat the wool from their sheep. right let's have a quick recap then shall we so we have an abbey which is identical to a cathedral right and it has a river running right past it and right through it and according to the narrative, it's almost a thousand years old. Now, this doesn't look, look no different to any other grand cathedral. So, who's to say that all these other cathedrals weren't doing the same thing? Now, another thing is, when you get to all these here, these vaults. These vaults are everywhere. Everywhere you go, they seem to be everywhere. Every major city, or in a star fault, or a star city, if you go underground, you, you, meet, you meet these vaults. Now, I wonder if these vaults are where they held water before they got used to store stuff. Because they seem to be everywhere in major cities and in star cities. But I digress anyway. It's just my information. Don't shoot me down. It's just what I'm, just what I'm noticing. And let's not forget. These cistern monks or whatever you call them. I don't even know how to pronounce that word properly. But I'll call it cistern because it sounds like a, a plumbing cistern to me. But these cisternical monks, they were using water power 800 years ago. Just a side note. Those of you who don't know, a cistern is somewhere that stores water. A cistern stores water. So why have we got systemical monks? Right, let's actually hit Wikipedia up. Wikipedia says a cistern is a waterproof receptacle for holding liquids, usually water. Cisterns are often built to catch and store rainwater. Cisterns are distinguished from wells by their waterproof linings. 
Modern systems range in a capacity from a few litres to a thousand cubic metres, effectively forming covered reservoirs. Right, I literally had to Google the word, it's cistercian. So that's what it says, cistercian, and it comes from cistern. And what that actually means is, or well, what they do is, the Cistercians also made major contributions to culture and technology in medieval Europe. Cistercians' ar architecture is considered one of the most beautiful styles of medieval architecture. And the Cistercians were the main force of technology diffusion in fields such as agriculture and hydraulic engineering. See, I was not barking up the wrong tree. The etymology led me here. These monks worked with water. This this cathedral, just like all the other cathedrals, supplied water, fresh clean water or healing water, or power stations. Or maybe it did all of it, but that's just a guess. With the knowledge that I'm presenting, or the evidence that I'm presenting, it's crystal clear to say that Cistercian monks built and maintained these cathedrals and abbeys, and they worked on water and agriculture. So let's have a look on the LiDAR because they would have had to route the water straight to this cathedral. Now let's have a look at the terrain around it. It's full of pools and cisterns and reservoirs and all sorts of stuff. So this is the cathedral and you can see that the water comes from around here into this corner. And when they're cornered like that, I swear it's to restrict the flow. I guarantee you. I mean, look at the earthworks here. What is going on? This is like three reservoirs or three lakes. But they're probably lakes now, but it's all, it's all connected to Fountain Abbey, which is ironic that you call it Fountain Abbey. <laughs> Unbelievable. But it's there, it's there for us. There's a little, little, little saying up there, I don't know what that is. But again, you can see this channel and this abbey is directly in the middle of the channel. Look at it. Very interesting stuff. So the water passed that, so they must have had to route the water, then right exactly where they need it pinpointed, built the cathedral. Now this is another one I was looking at. This was Minster in York. And again, it was the same setup, the exact same setup. It's in like some sort of like mini ditch sort of thing. Like I don't think you'd be able to see this if it wasn't for this LiDAR, because you'd have trees and bush and all sorts of stuff in the way. But you can see like it's in the middle of like a river, which is very peculiar, huh? Uh, if I go down, it's very hard to control this, by the way. Very, very hard. This is a 3D image of the land. But look, directly flow straight to it. So it would have went underneath it, or in it, or around it, and come out the other end. Sorry about this. I'm such an amateur. Look, I've only been on this a few days. But look, you can see that it runs a route. So why is there routes for water running to and from and under these cathedrals? Or abbeys? But it's, it's crystal clear now that the evidence is just mounting up, piling up and piling up and piling up. And one other thing quickly, if you're wondering where I got the graphics from, like the splash, the logo and the, and the, and the start little setup, check out this guy, Senso Sentinel. He's a music producer, a rapper, graphic designer and all that jazz. And look, we can see the quality. So I'll leave the links in the description. And if you need his services, you can go and hit him up because it is incredible. So, 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 I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I said this two years ago when I set this channel up. What is the correlation with cathedrals, churches and star cities? Why am I asking that? Why? Because in the middle of every single star city, there is a cathedral. And if you look at the maps, you can see the water running directly to it or underneath it. And it's in every single star city. So that's a fact. If you look at the centre of it, you will see there is a cathedral. So it's just undeniable. And again, these are water cymatic patterns that represent frequencies. Okay, so there's so many dots that are getting connected here. And this is just, it's unbelievable. Again, look in the center, you'll see the cathedral. This one here, you can see water is directly underground to it. But you can see water coming into the star city. And again, in the center. It's just unbelievable. Like, where did this knowledge go? Like, who decided to, to get rid of this and not tell the general people? Again, here you can see water running directly through it, and somewhere along there will be a cathedral. Obviously, it's not the best picture, but these star cities, this is what they represent frequencies. 
cymatic patterns. And you see this everywhere, you see it in nature. It's part of nature, it's been around since day one. And it's beautiful, look at it. Look at it. So this is what the star cities are based on. These frequency patterns, cymatic patterns. And another thing, monks dug this because they needed fresh spring water to the cathedral. So basically I was watching some guys do some urban exploring and there was underneath a cathedral. Uh, spring water to the cathedral, so there was a spring on top of the hill. I had to screenshot this, didn't want to get done for copyright. So these guys were underground and they're in this channel that goes directly, hang on. Down this is the only bit left and the water now runs into the river diverts into the river. So the water used to go straight from this spring directly underground to the cathedral. But something happened and they rerouted the water and it just goes into the, the river. Which I thought, what is the point in that? You've got all that fresh water, spring water, and you've gone all that way to, to divert it somewhere. Why don't you just let it be? Yeah, like, what a waste. It's just going into the sea. <sighs> Unbelievable, huh? Uh, I just want to chuck this one in here. Zoom in, you can see brickwork right, right underneath the waterfall. I'll just chuck that. I like to do a bit of comedy, so I thought I'd throw this one in there. William Walker, diver who saved Winchester Cathedral with his bare hands. So this is the guy. It was in the early 1900s. A diver whose work saved the Winchester Cathedral more than a century ago has been remembered at a commemoration commemoration service 100 years after his death. William Walker carried out repairs on the foundations of the cathedral to stop it from sinking into the ground. He had to descend into murky waters, 235 pits, each about 6 metres or 20 foot deep, to dig out rotten foundations and shore up the walls with concrete. It goes to say that Mr Walker died aged 49 during the Spanish flu epidemic in 1918. He was buried at Beckenham Cemetery in Bromley, South East London. The deep sea diver who usually worked at Portsmouth Dockyard was recruited in 1905 after large cracks appeared in the wall and vaulted ceiling of the cathedral. Putting it in, because Winchester was a high underlying water table and the cathedral was built on peaty soil, trenches dug below filled with water before the reinforcing work could be done. Mr. Walker worked from 1906 until 1911, spending nearly six hours a day underwater in darkness, working with bare hands and only just by his in touch. So this is a picture of it, of the guy in action, the geezer underground in the dark, loading all the bricks. But there's only one photo of him going underground and that's not even a good visible picture. There's no other pictures of any other holes. There's meant to be 235 holes. So there's no material and there's no work being done. Let's get back on the LiDAR, eh? Because the LiDAR don't LiDAR. I wanted to look at this cathedral because apparently there's 235 excavations around this cathedral and I can't see nothing. The ground looks completely like it's been smoothed out. There's no way was there 235 pits around this thing. Now, I personally believe the water system underneath this cathedral broke or burst or something and they didn't know what to do, so they just poured all sorts of stuff down there and this guy was the man to do it. But let me just tell you why it was BS anyway, because nothing was calculated that they threw down there. Nothing. Because I've done the mathematics. So let's have a look, shall we? So this guy, it says that he... So this is what he said he'd done. He said he'd done five years of work supporting the cathedral using more than 250 bags of concrete, 115,000 concrete blocks and 900,000 bricks all in five years all in his own. So let's do the mathematics. Let's not forget he'd done it in the dark as well. Let's not forget that little fact. So I did the maths. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, so I said six years, because it's actually five and a half, but let's say six years. So I did six years, yeah, times by the days, and that's 2,190 days, basically, of work that guy done. Right, so then, then the next sum was, how many bricks did this guy lay in his 2,190 days? So that means every single day, no days off, he'd have had to lay 410 bricks. Alongside that, 115 
thousand blocks of concrete you'd have had to do 52 a day on top of the 410 bricks and then to top it off the concrete sandbags you'd have had to do 11 of them a day all in the pitch black underwater no tools whatsoever who was knocking up the cement who was knocking up all that stuff it's a, it's a load of cobblers if you ask me an absolute load of cobblers to me it seems like there was a massive leak, they didn't know what to do, so they just shoved as much geopolymer and bricks down there as possible. And to me again it seems like it's underneath the actual cathedral, so they went from inside because I can't actually find anything on the LiDAR that says that the ground has, is uneven outside there, it's very strange. And you'd expect if there's 235 holes you'd see them, especially on the LiDAR, but you don't see nothing. So I believe, like the churches in South End, the wells are inside the church or the cathedrals or churches are built directly on top of them so if i haven't knocked your socks off i've probably bored the socks off of you so let's have a brucey bonus shall we yeah right now i received an email a few months back and it goes to say that uh, it's to do with cathedrals by the way hey paul i am watching a few of your videos and my partner is lithuanian she ran a theater school for 25 years and when she was young, she knew a very old lady who could remember going to the church as a small girl with her mother. And they would take a metal sphere to the church every Sunday and place it on the altar for the duration of the meeting along with everyone else. And there was a metal floor in the church and a big metal rod extending from the floor up to the steeple. The sphere would charge and that would supply electricity at home for a week. As you speculate, the sphere would sit in the fireplace hooked up somehow. The whole setup was used for healing. Why do you say, do you feel well? <laughs> Interesting, huh? And why do we use the term well-being? See, this whole world has just been jumbled up and buildings and things have been reused. And because people born and dying, life is so short. Like You could literally, the world could be one thing one day. And then in 80 years time it could be completely same, completely different and no one would even have a clue what it used to be like. No one. It's like all this information we do, no one knows the truth. They're just opinions. But this is the front room we get now. This is the front room I grew up in. It's ironic because it's the same tiles around the fireplace, it's the same carpet on the floor, it's the same sofas, same curtains, same mirror above the fire. It's, it's, I bet every house looked like that. And it just goes to show that I was brought up in a very old fashioned house because this would have been the late 80s, early 90s for me and it would just still look like 1950. <laughs> Never mind. Thanks, Nan. And again, I know I've plastered these over my social media, but people might not have seen it. So I went to Portland on the LiDAR just to have a look at the star fault and the quarries. And well, 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 what do we see, huh? What you see, precision in the star fault. Absolute pre precision. Look at that look at that look how you did this with no lasers <laughs> uh, no aerial view like how, how are you going to do that like you have to be at least a kilometer in the sky to look down on this because it's huge you can also see what bits were the quarries and you can see what bits are not quarries so we, we were just getting told pork is left right and center and another thing that i've come across dover starfall is identical to the one in valletta and Floriana, identical. You have a little mini star fault on the right hand side and on the left hand side it's spiked. Now the funny thing about this is the one in Malta is exactly double the size of the one in Dover. So the one in Malta is 1.42 kilometers long and the one in Dover is 7.1 kilometers long. So why, why different parts of the world? Oh and they've got the same cardinal points as well by the way. Which is another thing, like when I was on Google Earth, I didn't even have to spin the image around or anything, they just laid the same. So, why? Why why, why have we got two identical, and I'm not on about these pony little ones that get made up with like four bastion corners, I'm about real serious star faults, star cities mate, look at this. Why is this identical? Another interesting thing is that both these star faults have a grand shaft. And uh, the ironic thing is, the Star Fall or Star City in Dover actually has a Knights Templar church. You can't make it up. It's like we're just given the same script wherever you go. It's a load of BS anyway. I hope you've enjoyed it. And one more thing. Don't forget, if you need any services regarding product designing, if you need logos designed or anything like that, or someone to do some sort of music producing or sound engineering or rapping, hit up Senso Zentinel. I'll leave all his links and his website in the description. One love, ta-da.